Today we are going to talk about parallel circuits. A parallel circuit, by definition, is a circuit that has multiple current paths. So in contrast to a series circuit, where there's only one possible path for current to flow, a parallel circuit has multiple paths. So the current flows from the battery, and at this point here, there is a node where some of the current will follow this path through this resistor, and the rest of the current will follow this path through this resistor. And both current paths come back together at this node, and the total current flows back to the battery. The voltage in a parallel circuit is the same everywhere in the circuit. So if I take a voltmeter and I measure it across the battery, I have a 10 volt battery here, so there's 10 volts. And if I measure here, there's 10 volts. And if I measure here, there's 10 volts because I'm still measuring across the battery. So the voltage is the same everywhere in our circuit. 10 volts, 10 volts, and 10 volts. Does that make 30 volts? No, it's the same 10 volts everywhere in the circuit. The current in a parallel circuit is different through each current path, unless the resistors are the same. The current will be inversely proportional to the resistor value. In other words, if the resistor value goes up, the current will go down. And the higher the resistance, the less current we will have in each path. If I add current meters to the circuit, we will see that whatever current I have flowing from the battery will split between the two branches. So for example, I have three amps flowing from the battery. Through this leg, I have two amps. And through this leg, I have one amp. And those two currents come back together at this node and flowing back into the battery, I have my three amps again. So my three amps are flowing through this part of the circuit. It splits up into two amps and one amp, and then back into three amps to go back to the battery. This is demonstrating Kirchhoff's current law which states that the current flowing into a node will equal the current flowing out of a node. So I have three amps flowing into this node here, two amps flowing this way, one amp flowing this way, there's my three amps. So I have three amps going in and three amps coming back out. Same thing happens here at this node. I have three amps going in and three amps coming out. That is Kirchhoff's current law. A more useful way of stating Kirchhoff's current law is that the sum of the currents in the branches of the circuit will equal the total current. A parallel circuit is not parallel because of the way I draw it, but because there are multiple current paths. So here is a parallel circuit, but this parallel circuit is identical to this circuit. In both cases, I have the current splitting in two different directions, going through two resistors, and then coming back together for a single total current. Likewise, this circuit is identical to this circuit. In both cases, we have the current coming out, splitting three different paths, and then coming back together to one. So parallel circuits are often drawn this way, but what makes it a parallel circuit is not the fact that the resistors are drawn parallel, but the fact that we have multiple paths that the current can flow. What happens to our total resistance when we put resistors in parallel? Here I have a simple circuit with a 10 volt battery and a 10 ohm resistor. 10 ohms divided into 10 volts gives us one amp of current. What's going to happen if I put another 10 ohm resistor in parallel with this one? Now I have 10 ohms and another 10 ohms, so I have a total of 20 ohms. My resistance went up, right? Well, look what happened. Now I have a path for one amp here, another path for another one amp here. So the current coming in here must be two amps. So my capacity to carry current went up, not down. So my resistance must have decreased. Let's calculate that out using Ohm's law. We now have two amps coming from the battery with a 10 volt battery. If we know our voltage, we divide into it. So 10 volts divided by two amps gives me a total of five ohms. So when I put the two resistors in parallel, my resistance went down, not up. And notice that I have two 10 ohm resistors together they have half the resistance, so there's five ohms. You can also think of this like laying pipes. Let's say I have a pipe that is this big and can carry one gallon per minute. If I put another pipe next to it that's the same size, that can also carry one gallon per minute, now I can carry two gallons per minute. My resistance to current flow has decreased. So putting resistors in parallel, like putting pipes in parallel, decreases our resistance.
Here, I now have 20 ohms in parallel with 30 ohms. We have 500 milliamps here, 333 milliamps here for a total of 833 milliamps. How do I calculate the total resistance? Let's calculate this out using Ohm's law. We have 833 milliamps, that's 0.833 amps. Divide that into 10 volts and we get a total of 12 ohms. So the two resistors in parallel have less resistance and notice that the total resistance is always lower than your lowest value resistor. So we have 20 ohms and 30 ohms. Our total resistance is less than the lowest resistor, less than 20 ohms and gives us 12 ohms. So how can we calculate that out? Obviously we can't just add them together like a series circuit, but let's see if we can take an average. So 20 plus 30 is 50, divide that by two and we get 25. That doesn't work. So the average resistance will not cut it. So how do we calculate resistors in parallel? We use a method called product over sum. So we multiply the two resistors together. That's 20 times 30. Then we add them together, 20 plus 30. Then we take that product, divide it by the sum, and we get the resistance. So the rules for a parallel circuit are, one, the definition of a parallel circuit is a circuit with multiple current paths. The voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit. We have different currents. The currents through the resistors or other components are going to be different unless they happen to have the same resistance. And the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. So the higher the resistance, the lower the current. We also have Kirchhoff's current law, which states that the current through the various branches of the circuit will add together to the total current leaving and going back to the battery. And the total resistance is calculated by the product over sum method. The product over sum method of calculating the total resistance of a parallel circuit only works when you have two resistors. If you have three or more resistors, you have to work them in pairs. Let's start here by working these two resistors. We have 30 ohms and 60 ohms. Together that is 30 times 60 divided by 30 plus 60, which equals a total of 20 ohms. Now we have a 20 ohms here and 80 ohms here. Now we'll work those two resistances together where we have 20 ohms times 80 ohms divided by 20 ohms plus 80 ohms, giving us a total of 16 ohms. So this circuit has a total of 16 ohms of resistance. If we add a battery voltage, then we can calculate the current through each one of these legs and confirm this problem. So if we have 10 volts across 30 ohms, we have 0.33 amps. Here we have 10 volts across 60 ohms. We double the resistance, therefore we will have half the current. So our current will be 0.166 amps. And finally here we have 10 volts and 80 ohms. We divide our 80 ohms into the 10 volts and we get 0.125 amps. Now Kirchhoff's current law says we need to add these currents together, which would be 0.624 amps. So if we have 16 ohms and 10 volts, we should get 0.624 amps. Let's calculate that out. 10 volts divided by 16 ohms equals 0.625 amps. Considering rounding errors, that is correct. There is another method to calculate the total resistance of a parallel circuit other than the product over sum method. And this will work for however many resistors you have. You don't have to work them in pairs. We take the reciprocal of each resistor, add those reciprocals together, and then take the reciprocal of that sum. Here's the basic formula. One over our total resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and we can keep going for as many resistors as we need. So let's work it for this problem. We have 30 ohms, 60 ohms, and 80 ohms. So we take 1 over 30 plus 1 over 60 plus 1 over 80. Here are our reciprocals after calculating them. We add these three numbers together to get an intermediate number. Then we take the reciprocal of that number and we got 16.0256, which accounting for rounding errors is the same answer we got with the product over sum method. This is a lot like pretending we have a one volt battery and calculating our currents using that one volt, adding those currents together to get a total current, and then using that 
to calculate our resistance by dividing that current into our voltage. So we take 30 ohms into 1 volt to calculate the current through this branch, 60 ohms into 1 volt to calculate the current for this branch, 80 ohms into 1 volt to calculate the current for this branch. Notice those are the same numbers that we had for the reciprocals because 30 divided into 1 is the reciprocal of 30. 60 into 1 is the reciprocal of 60. So these currents are simply the reciprocals of the resistance. We add those three currents together to get a total current. Then we divide that total current into our voltage of 1, which is taking the reciprocal of that total current, and that gives us the total resistance for the circuit. Here again we have three resistors in parallel, and I made these numbers easy so we can do the calculations in our head. So here we have 100 ohms in parallel with 100 ohms, that will give us 50 ohms. Now this 50 ohms is in parallel with this 50 ohms. So together they are 25 ohms. So the total resistance of these three resistors is 25 ohms. Let's check that out with Kirchhoff's current law and see if it works. So we have 100 ohms with 10 volts across it. That gives us a total of 1 amp. Here we have the same thing, 100 ohms, 100 volts, so we have another 1 amp. And here we have half the resistance, so we get twice the current. 50 ohms divided into 100 volts gives us 2 amps. So our total current is 1 amp plus 1 amp plus 2 amps gives us a total of 4 amps. Now let's use Ohm's law to see if this all worked. We have 4 amps, we divide that into 100 volts, and we get 25 ohms. So what have we learned? We have learned that a parallel circuit means that we have multiple current paths. The voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit because we have one voltage source and that is put across all of the components in the circuit. We have different currents, unless our components are the same. So if we have equal resistors, we will have equal currents, but the currents tend to be different and the currents are inversely proportional to the resistance, meaning that if our resistance goes up, our current goes down. We also have Kirchhoff's current law, which states that we have multiple currents, and if we add those currents together, we get a total current. So whatever current comes from the battery will split into multiple paths and then come back together. We take those multiple currents and add them together, we get our total current, which is Kirchhoff's current law. And the total resistance is calculated with the product over sum method, or sometimes with the reciprocal of the reciprocals method using the one over the total resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of all the other resistors. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.